The New York Islanders are riding high into the Stanley Cup playoffs, and they will begin their opening round series against the Carolina Hurricanes on Saturday afternoon. So let's break down the series and preview game one with New York Post Islanders beat writer Ethan Sears, who joins me now. Ethan, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Dexter. Thanks so much for having me. Always good to have you to talk some hockey, specifically about the Islanders. And Ethan, this is the third playoff meeting between the Islanders and the Hurricanes, with Carolina eliminating New York in both previous encounters. What's the general mood in the Islanders' camp about facing Carolina again in the postseason? Well, I, I think the Islanders are, they feel pretty good about themselves right now. You know, they they finished the season on an 8-1-0 run to kind of charge into the playoffs. Um, they know that they're going to be underdogs in this series, obviously. You know, Carolina's had an, an excellent year. They Carolina beat them last year. Um, you know, the Islanders are, are generally considered to be on paper not the better team in this series but you know they're okay with that they they feel they feel confident with where they are they feel confident with how they've been playing um they're not really thinking too much about last year's series patrick Watt actually said this morning he didn't even bother going to watch the tape of it he feels like they're a different team now uh, obviously they have a different coach now he wasn't coaching them last year um, so, you know, overall, they feel about as good as, as you would expect. All right, there you go. Feeling good heading into the first round series. That is always what the fans want to hear. Now, what they might not want to hear is about center Jean-Gabriel Peugeot. We know that he's a crucial part of the Islanders lineup. Can you update us on his status after he suffered an injury in the season finale? And second part of the question for me, Ethan, is if Peugeot is unable to play, how do you think the Islanders will adjust their lineup? Yeah, so first of all, Based on this morning, it sounds like uh, J.G. Peugeot, he's, he's going to take warm-ups later today, uh, and they're going to make a decision from there. So game time call, but he, he's in Raleigh. He's going to take warm-ups. So those are, you know, at least positive, at least positive signs. Um, if he can't play, uh, then I'm expecting Kyle McLean to go uh, on the third line between Anders Lee and Pierre Engvall in that spot that Peugeot usually plays. And then the fourth line uh, probably will be uh, Matt Martin, Simon Holmstrom, and Cal Clutterbuck, and whether Clutterbuck or Holmstrom ends up centering that line, um, we'll kind of see. Uh, I, I think it could be either one of them. All right, game time decision, so fans, keep your eye on that one. Ethan, who do you see as the X Factors for the Isles in this series? Is there an under-the-radar player who do you think can make a significant <clears throat> impact here? Well, the X factors for the Islanders, I would start with Semyon Varlamov uh, in net. You know, last year was it was all Ilya Sorokin coming into the playoffs. Sorokin had kind of gotten them, uh, just just dragged them into the playoffs. Had an excellent regular season. This year, Varlamov has kind of played that role for them. He he was the backup for most of the year um, and started started getting more of that starters workload late in the year and and has been excellent for them. And he's going to get game one and. And I think for now, this is sort of his net to lose. So it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. And then also Noah Dobson, um, you know, we, we all know he, he missed the last two games of the regular season uh, with an upper body injury. He's expected to be back uh, today. But, you know, is he going to be 100 percent? Is he going to be the Dobson who, you know, had a 70 point season who played nearly 25 minutes a night? Or are you going to get kind of so, you know, a watered down version of him who, who's still dealing with an injury, kind of like we saw with Matt Barzal at, the, at this stage last year, where he came back for game one, but probably wasn't quite 100% himself. Um, so that's kind of my big question coming into tonight. As yeah. for an under the radar player, uh, I would be looking at Kyle McLean. Um, I've been really, really impressed by what he's done since uh, since he's broken into the lineup. Just a high energy player, uh, strong in that bottom six. He might be playing up the lineup a little bit, depending on what happens with Pajot. Uh, obviously, his first playoff action. So uh, he's somebody who I'm going to be really uh, looking out for as well. All right, Kyle McLean, one to watch here. First time in the playoffs. We'll see how he's able to perform. You mentioned the goaltending, Ethan. And how do you see this matchup of goaltenders playing out in the series? Who has the edge between the pipes here? Well, I think the Islanders probably do for for a couple reasons. The first is the first is depth. Um, you know, between Varlamov and Sorokin, I don't really know if there's another team in the league that that can kind of match that goaltending tandem. And and I, and I do think there's a good chance that 
that both goalies will play for the Islanders and, and that both Freddie Anderson and Pyotr Kachekov will, will play at some point for the Hurricanes. Uh, so the overall depth for the Islanders gives them a slight edge. And as good as Freddie Anderson has been since he's come back from injury, um, it's a little bit of, of a smaller sample size compared to what Barlamov's done over the whole season. Um, Anderson's health has kind of been a question mark in the past. Uh, he seems to be fine now, but there is that little bit of trepidation. Uh, Carolina's goaltending is certainly better than it was a year ago, but I think you still have to give the edge there to, to the Islanders. All right, so giving the edge to the Isles between the pipes, and we'll see how that one plays out. And you mentioned this earlier, Ethan. The Islanders, they won eight of their last nine games heading into the postseason. How important is that <clears throat> momentum, and can it translate into playoff success here? Well, it's important in the sense that I think they've, they've finally found a lineup combination that seems to be working for them, and it feels good when you're winning. So so they're, they're coming in with that kind of confidence that they've, they've figured out something that works. But, you know, it's also the playoffs is – it's something different. It's a different ball game. Uh, you know, you're wiping the slate clean. This is this is game one of the new season. So, you know, does it matter? Yes. Is it the biggest thing in the world? Maybe not, because if they lose game one, then you're kind of like, who cares, right? There's there's no there's no it, it doesn't matter after that point. No, fair point, right? If they lose game one, all that eight of nine talk goes out of the window, and it's like your own one down in the series. That's what it is, and now it's time to win. So we'll see how that goes. Now, the Islanders, they are starting the series on the road. As you know, you're there in Raleigh with very little rest after the last regular season game. What are the keys to the team stealing game one away from home? Well, I think just establishing a heavy forecheck early, trying, trying to kind of just – Get get Carolina out of out of that rhythm that we've seen in in playoff games that they've played before, right? Which is Carolina can they can roll all four lines, they they can dominate possession, they can play in zone kind of all the time, and and the Islanders probably are not going to completely shift that paradigm. Um, if that makes sense, I, I don't expect them to, for example, you know, necessarily have a, a majority of, of shot attempts against a team like Carolina. But, you know, if they can kind of make it hard on them, play a physical game, um, get pucks in deep, you know, do all that kind of bread and butter stuff, that's that's goal number one for them. We'll see if they're able to do that. If that works out, maybe they can steal a game on the road and go up one nothing in the series, which would be huge for them. Now, when we talk about this series, Ethan, got to do this to you. It's prediction time. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you, what's your series prediction? How do you see this matchup between the Isles and Hurricanes playing out here? Well, uh, for, the, for the paper this morning, I, I took Carolina in six, so I guess I'll stick with Carolina in six. Um, but... You know, I, I think on a sort of game-by-game game level, I, I'm expecting some close games here. Um, we've seen the Islanders have played well on the road and in this building specifically the two times they've played here this year. Um, the the goaltending can keep the Islanders in it, and, and they tend to have – they have been able to kind of hang around in games and, and play play well against teams that are – I guess you would you would say more talented on paper than them this season. Um, I, I do think that they will have every chance uh, to win this series, but you know it's kind of hard to to look at to look at everything on paper and and say and say that they're anything other than the underdog and and the special teams disparity. I think is going to be pretty heavily tilted towards Carolina, right? And that's so probably where where you'll see it, right? Tilt. And so you you know, noting that they are underdogs. There's a follow up for you on that with that, but you think they'll be very competitive in this series, Ethan. If that is the case, and this is a hard fought series that they lose in six, or we even say seven games, how would you would you evaluate this situ this season for the Isles as success with Patrick Watt taking over mid season? Everything has happened. Do you look at this season as a success if they have a hard fought first round series here against Carolina? I think probably not. It's a good, it's a really good question, uh, and you could argue it either way. Um, my sort of window for that is: 
does is, is your sort of longer term outlook about this core different than it was coming into the season and i'm not sure that that's the case losing in the first round um obviously the way they played under wa changes it a little bit um but if they lose in the first round then i think you kind of look at it and say okay well they stayed with this core they they had pretty much the same roster as, as last year with just a couple minor changes and they ended up getting exactly as far as they did last year getting pretty close to the same number of points i think they finished with two more points in the regular season and losing to the same team right so there's i think there would be a little bit of a feeling that okay well they're a little bit stuck in neutral and and as much as changing the coach maybe helped they probably need to change the roster over a little bit um if they can get to the second round i think that's when you start looking and saying okay this this team kind of very clearly surpassed everybody's expectations they proved they can still win a playoff series with this core and maybe there's something here if, if you're giving them 82 games with patrick law yeah and we'll see there'll be a lot of questions no matter what happens in series what will be the future for the islanders going forward that is ethan sears new york post islanders beat writer down covering the team in raleigh before game one of their series against the carolina hurricanes ethan appreciate the insight Always good to talk some hockey with you, and thank you for helping us preview game one in this series. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you, Dexter.